bigoted winner. Me, I worship him. Me, I follow him. Me, I trust in him. Me, I wait for him. And me, I'm the woman who gave birth to him. Yes, at Christmas we recall his birth. But just you wait. What's his name, Mary? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. sermon passage reading is Luke chapter 1 verses 39 to 56. At that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfil his promise to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has promised mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful, to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Rachel. Well, as I said, it's that uh, low Sunday. It's the week, the day between uh, Christmas and New Year's. And it's that week of the year where no one knows where they are. No one knows what day it is. No one knows what they're supposed to be doing, what meal we're supposed to be eating. Are we supposed to be somewhere? Am I supposed to be meeting with someone? And we're all absolutely terrified that we're going to miss bin night. Uh, is it Christmas? Is it New Year's? Well, today, in um, line with the reality, I have a Christmas reflection for the new year for you. This is my Christmas reflection for a new year. As we head towards uh, 2021, my encouragement for you, here's the headline, is to joyfully glorify God in humility with spiritual hunger. Joyfully glorify God in humility with spiritual hunger. And Mary, the mother of our Lord, is our model and example of that this morning, who joyfully glorifies God in humility and spiritual hunger. It's a beautiful song, isn't it, that Mary sings in response to the wonderful news, the extraordinary and miraculous news that she will give birth to the long-awaited Messiah, the Saviour King, who will be the Lord Jesus, who will save his people from their sins. And all throughout the Bible, when people hear of the enormous salvation that God brings about by his word and spirit, they respond in song. It's one of the chief ways we respond to God's great news of salvation, isn't it? In singing, which is why this year has been so hard in lots of ways for church as we've been restricted like we are this morning in not being allowed to sing and when we hear of Jesus and the enormous salvation that he would be born into to poverty and he would die in shame and he would rise triumphantly and he would rule from heaven and he would one day return to bring in 
God's eternal kingdom, our hearts are filled with joy. Our hearts are filled with praise because of the enormity of what God has done for us and we want to burst out in song. That's the right response to overflow in that kind of way. And that's exactly what Mary does. It's exactly what people all throughout the scriptures do when they experience the enormity of God's salvation for his people. Their hearts are filled with joy and they overflow with praise, acknowledging who God is and what God has done. It's a wonderful way for God's people to express their joy and to respond to his salvation. And that's what Mary is responding to, the enormity of what's going on for her, this young teenage Jewish girl. Uh, She's pausing to respond that inside of her is growing this tiny baby who is Emmanuel, who is God with us, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Wonderful Counselor, the Eternal Father, the one who will rule on King David's throne, not just for one people in one place at all time, but for eternity. So how does she respond? With a song of rapturous praise and worship to God that is filled with the scriptures. This teenage Jewish Jewish girl knew her Bible. You can hear it. She's been taught the Bible. She's read the Bible. She's heard the Bible. She's memorized the Bible. And so as she hears this wonderful news from the angel, as she reflects on what's going on in this situation, when she opens her mouth to respond, what falls out of her are the words of Scripture, God's promises to his people pouring out in response to his salvation because these are the things that she's treasured in her heart. It's hard to miss for the the Bible reader, hard to miss the echo in Mary's song from Hannah's song back in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Another miraculous birth that's responded to with praise for God, his character, his salvation, his work in the world for his good purposes. But it's not just Hannah's song. If you you look through, and this is maybe a good low Sunday project for the afternoon is to look through Mary's song and see the the different echoes from the Psalms, uh, from the book of Job, uh, and to, to see what it is that Mary responds with to this wonderful news of salvation. And the model that she gives us in response to Jesus and his salvation is to glorify God with humility and hunger. That's what she says in verse 46. She says, My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. That the second half of that sentence isn't meant to add something new to what she's saying. It's meant to, to, to expand on it, to build on it. She's glorifying God by rejoicing in her Saviour, by seeing and savouring him for all that he's done for her. We glorify God, we make much of him and exalt him when we delight in him, when we rejoice in him as our saviour. Glorifying God is about um, seeing him for who he truly is. The, The old word for glorifying God is magnifying God. You know how you can magnify things in two different ways? You can make something tiny look really big, like you're looking through a microscope, or you can see something big in closer proportion to what it truly is, like when you look through a telescope. When you look through a telescope, you're trying to see something huge in a bit more proportion than what you can normally see with your uh, naked eye, right? And that's what we're doing when we're glorifying God. When despots glorify themselves, they make themselves small and insignificant, big by making statues of themselves, right? 
But when we glorify God, we want to see him for something of what he truly is, his true greatness, his true glory, his true beauty. By seeing him and savouring him for the great God and saviour that he truly is. So Mary says, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my saviour. Why? Because he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. You see how Mary, as she responds to God, doesn't just rejoice in the gifts that he has given, but in the character of the giver. Because you can't separate those two things. What God, who God is and what God does, they go together. We receive mercy from God because he is merciful. We receive grace from God because he is gracious. We long for justice in this world because God is just. Evil will be punished one day. Why? Because God is holy. God's action and God's character are held together in order to glorify him. We don't separate his character and his actions, but we hold them together when we seek to glorify and celebrate all that he is and all that he's done for us in Jesus. And so Mary, the basis for her response is in the person of God. He is the saviour. He is the mighty one. The one who is holy. The one who is just. The one who is powerful. The one who is merciful. The one who is gracious. And so to glorify him, we see him for who he truly is and what he, what he has done for us. And this rejoicing in God, this glorifying him, it needs to come from a position, a posture of humility. You can't see God for who he truly is and remain proud. You can't see the salvation that God has brought in Jesus and remain proud. If you're going to glorify God for who he is and what he's done, you have to be in a posture of humility, in recognition of who he is and therefore who you are. His mercy, verse 50, extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and he has lifted up the humble. Which is consistent with what Jesus will continue to teach and will continue to do all the way to his death on the cross. He scatters the proud those who think they're superior, those who think that they are self-sufficient, those who set themselves up against God. There's that line in uh, Revelation chapter 3 when uh, Jesus is addressing the church of Laodicea, that one that we kind of send shivers down your spine because you don't want to be the church of Laodicea that's spat out of Jesus' mouth because they are neither hot or cold. And one of the things that he says against them is that they have been, because they are rich, because they have a lot of stuff, they say, we don't need anything. Which is why throughout the Bible being rich being well fed, being provided for is often a dangerous position to be in because it can make you think in your heart, I don't need God, though you continue to take things from his generous hand. The humble and the hungry, those with a posture of need, those recognising their own sin and God's great salvation, well, they are the ones that Jesus comes to lift up, to provide for, 
to satisfy. Taking a posture of humility that says, God is great and I am not. And a posture of hunger, I have nothing, I need everything. That's how we glorify God in 2021. Recognising him for who he is. Trusting